Welcome to our webinar series, Ministering During the COVID-19 Crisis. So today we're gonna to talk about staying healthy during COVID-19. I think you can see this from the scripture that uh, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. And so we pray for others to have good health. And we're privileged today to have with us Dr. Fred Yerby. He's been practicing for over two decades in Alabama uh, as a family physician. So he's seen a lot of good, uh, he's done a lot of good work over the years. And Dr. Yerby, it's so good to have you here with us today. Thank you, Brother Eddie. Thanks for having me. Well, I know this is a quite the time as you're working with folks with different issues with COVID-19 and just health in general. Let's talk a little bit about what we need to be aware of and what we need to think of as it comes to our own health as we go through this particular time period. Yes, sir. So uh, there are many things that are, that are that are common that we need to be doing during this time period, but certainly there, um, this uh, pandemic has uh, affected us all and in many different ways and uh, certainly uh, uh, we need to be aware of of our own health but uh, other people's health as well uh, i think as you can see from this slide there are places in the u.s where uh, the pandemic seems to be uh, declining but there are other areas where uh, that decline is is not as rapid or whether it's not uh, actually occurring yet there are some places where cases are, are still growing or just starting to sort of level off and so it's important whoever, wherever you may be, to look at the map, to think about your own community, to think about where COVID-19 is increasing or declining. And that, that has a lot to do with how vigilant we may be. We should all be vigilant, but to be thinking about our health and protecting ourselves. And there's certain folks that are at greater risk during this time of COVID-19, aren't there? Yes, there certainly are, Brother Eddie, and, and we've been able to sort of see that from the beginning. The ones at uh, the highest risk of serious illness and even death are those with uh, pre-existing conditions, um, things like diabetes, uh, heart failure, uh, respiratory problems such as uh, COPD or emphysema and asthma are at a particularly high risk and have had the most complications from this disease. And so if you're in one of those categories, it's important to really think about trying to improve your health. Uh, we should be doing that at, at all times, but especially during this time. And then uh, we all want to get back to church and some of our churches are starting to open back up. But there are some of the things that we engage in as church that can increase our risk for COVID-19. Right. We certainly need to be careful as we do start trying to open back up and gather together again that uh, we don't want to um, expose uh, people um, to uh, a higher risk of infection and, uh, and we ourselves don't want to be exposed. Uh, this slide uh, demonstrates uh, an exposure at a choir practice. I think this was in Washington State and um, there were a number of people this choir practice who became infected. Uh, they were there for uh, quite a length of time and, and uh, they were not uh, distanced or, or, or um, observing any of those uh, social distancing guidelines at this time because the virus was new and uh, they were not aware of, of what was going on but many of them became infected uh, so we don't know for sure if that was because of the actual act of singing if the if the droplets may have been spread more through that or just because they're in such close proximity for such a length of time. But it is something certainly to be aware of as, as we go back into church and we're so used to, um, to shaking hands and, and hugging one another and, and uh, singing in close proximity that we won't do anything uh, that might needlessly spread this virus. And so we've developed this uh, little meme, I guess they call it, on staying healthy. We'll put this out uh, a little bit later today but we're encouraging folks to keep routine, sleep well, eat well, exercise, get outside, practice good hygiene, and have a cheerful attitude. So let's walk through that. Why is it so important to maintain a good routine, Dr. Yerby? Well, maintaining routine just helps uh, improve your overall health. Uh, one of the uh, most important things for uh, health is, is good sleep, and I think we'll talk about that more in, in a minute, but one of the things that helps you get the right kind of sleep uh, is to maintain that routine um, and that also helps you I think stay on track with uh, other areas of uh, healthy lifestyle as well if you can 
uh, just maintain that routine, maintain those good habits, uh, make them a habit by having that routine in your life. It's kind of neat that even Jesus had a routine. He would get up in the morning, usually get up early, go out, go pray. Um, my dad used to talk about his routine and if his routine got off, then he was off. And so even if we may be um, quarantined, we want to think about and have routine and it can be easy to struggle to get our routine back as we go into this new normal, so to speak. You mentioned sleep too, though. Yes, sir. So uh, as you were saying, you know, we, we sort of had our routine and then that may have changed some during uh, the quarantine period. And now as we're starting to sort of loosen up and, um, and uh, get back out a little more then uh, then that routine changes again. So, uh, or it can have a tendency to do so. So we want to try to maintain that routine and maintain uh, those sleep cycles. Uh, certainly uh, getting plenty of sleep, getting the proper kind of sleep, uh, is important to our overall health. And one of the things that helps with sleep is to have what we call good sleep hygiene. Uh, you want to try to maintain normal uh, bedtimes and normal awakening times. So you go to bed at the same time, you get up at the same time, um, no matter what your uh, activities uh, may be, uh, you know, for the day or what your uh, new normal is. Uh, and that helps you get the, the deep restful sleep uh, that you need. And so a lot of folks have had nightmares and difficulty during COVID-19, uh, not to be surprised, but we also see Jesus was able to sleep in the midst of a storm. And this is a bit like a storm. And so we can, uh, by practicing the good hygiene that you mentioned, we can still get some good sleep that can help us uh, to, to maintain our health and be in good shape. Now, right. the next Next thing was kind of upsetting. You said eat a good diet and try to include fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, we do have some scriptures that seem to point to that, not overeating, and then talking about eating the right things. But talk to us a bit, Dr. Yerby, about good, good diet and what it includes and what it excludes. Right. So we certainly want to try to maintain a good diet to maintain a good health. And uh, one of the... Uh, uh, the uh, landmarks of, of that kind of a diet is, is plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, many people believe that uh, fresh fruit and vegetables are good for your immune system. They certainly contain uh, antioxidants and things that may help you uh, fight off illness. And uh, certainly they do help um, boost your, your health and your uh, immune systems in general. This slide shows uh, a list of some of the foods that are thought to be particularly high in some of those immune boosters. Uh, like zinc and vitamin C and vitamin E and vitamin, R, uh, and vitamin A and iron and vitamin B6. Uh, again, those are um, uh, some of the, the, the green leafy things and then many of the fresh fruits and, and nuts. Um, and uh, you'll see on the right hand side of this slide, it talks about uh, eating those fresh unprocessed foods, uh, eating less of um, the uh, fatty foods, uh, the fat and oil uh, there, and uh, being sure we drink uh, plenty of water and then limiting our, our salt and sugar intake in particular. And so we've got a couple of other slides from the WHO. They, they really put a lot of emphasis on a well-balanced diet and uh, the fruit and vegetables, don't they? Right, just that well-balanced diet. I think that's the idea, the getting, getting in the fruits and vegetables uh, and trying to limit uh, the fats and the things um, that are high in sodium that are bad for you. So you can have some, some meat, some protein, some beans. Uh, those are good for you, um, but we just don't want to overdo it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to drink water uh, quite a bit as well, don't we? Right. So we want to drink plenty of water, staying hydrated, uh, improves your, your mood. Uh, and your immune system and uh, just your overall health. I want to avoid too many of those uh, sugary drinks, uh, too much caffeine. Uh, not that you can't have some once in a while, but we want to be sure that you're uh, drinking more water and uh, staying hydrated that way. And so it may be that folks keep track of that. I know a lot of people wear Fitbits and so forth these days or just carry around a little notebook. Okay, I've had two helpings of fruit. I've drank uh, three cups of uh, water uh, and just kind of monitoring uh, those kinds of things. You mentioned salt and uh, you've also mentioned soft drink, which they have as well. Um, those can be pretty bad for us, can't they? 
Right, the soft drinks particularly uh, are particularly high in sodium very often as well as the sugar. So we don't want too much sugar, and uh, we don't want too much sodium. So water is certainly better for us, and we want to try to limit those other things. Uh, so just try to eat a, eat a healthy diet, plenty of fruits and vegetables, get some protein, eat your meat and beans, uh, drink plenty of water. And uh, I think the slide on the right there also talks about us uh, eating at home, uh, certainly those uh, family meal times are, are important, I think, uh, for mm -hmm. the health of uh, your family, your, your, your spiritual health, your, your mood, as well as your physical health. Uh, and then it goes ahead to talk about uh, dining out. We know that many areas are reopening and restaurants are reopening. Uh, you can go back in the restaurants now some. Some of them, I think, are, are doing a better job about adhering to the social distancing guidelines than others. Um, but just because we can go back to the restaurants doesn't mean necessarily that we have to, certainly. And uh, it may be a good idea for many of us to continue to eat at home or often uh, to either prepare our own meals or maybe just go ahead and, and uh, get that takeout, try to get something healthy and go ahead and, and have that at home with our family. I know you had also mentioned try to plan when making uh, limited grocery store visits, talking a bit about limiting our exposure outside along those lines. Exactly. So uh, as we're thinking about, uh, you know, staying home more and having our meals at home more, we sort of want to plan ahead when we're doing our shopping. So when you're thinking about going to the grocery store and you're thinking about those uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, sort of have uh, maybe a list or have that on your mind, uh, know where you're going to go, uh, what you need to get, and don't just spend a lot of time uh, lingering in the stores or, um, touching, you know, items that other people uh, may have touched before you. You don't know who's been in the store or, or what they've touched. You know, the, um, most of retailers are trying to do a good job about uh, keeping things uh, clean uh, at intervals, but uh, uh, that's uh, not necessarily a continuous process. So uh, limit your exposure uh, when you're going out by, by knowing what you want and, and trying to be efficient in your shopping. And there's a blog that went viral last week talking about successful infection, which uh, sounds odd, but successful in infection equals exposure to virus times time. And that's really what you're getting at. The more exposed for the longer amount of time one is to the, the virus, the more likely R they are to get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes sense that the, uh, the longer you're around uh, the virus and the virus particles, uh, the longer your time of exposure is, and the, certainly the much uh, higher chance there is that you will actually become infected with the virus. There are certain places and certain situations uh, that are more likely to expose us to the virus as well, aren't there? Yeah, so I think uh, some of this is just kind of common sense as well. Uh, if you're in a a bathroom where many surfaces get touched frequently, then your chances may be a little higher. We've talked in the past, uh, I think about the, the solid surfaces, how uh, the viral particles or droplets can live on those, those hard surfaces for longer periods of time. And that's why we have to be careful about uh, doorknobs and countertops and those sorts of things. And certainly if you're around people who are uh, coughing and sneezing, um, those uh, droplets can be expelled further into the air and and uh, may travel further and, and put people at higher risk of exposure. And so we want to think about that too, as we go back to church, uh, thinking about these places, cleaning these places frequently, meaning bathrooms and doorknobs and uh, light switches and so forth. And also remembering these situations that put us at, at greater risk as well. Uh, you talk also about not buying too many non-perishables um canned goods and so forth uh as we're right going so through. as yes yeah, sir as you're planning on your trip to to the grocery and especially uh during the time of uh of sort of quarantine that we've had when people are going to be staying home more there's sort of an emphasis on uh, maybe uh trying to stock up on items uh so you wouldn't have to shop as much uh, that's okay but we just want to be careful about too many of those non-perishable items uh, there are not many of those uh, fruits and vegetables in the in the non-perishable category. Uh, we have to be careful about the things that come in uh, cans and bags. Uh, most of those things are higher in sodium. Uh, many of them are higher in sugar as well. And so it's fine to have some of those on hand, uh, but we still want to be sure uh, that we have the, the fresh fruits and vegetables uh, as well and not just uh, too many things that come in a can. 
That's good. And it's important even at this time to exercise, isn't it? Yes, sir. Exercise is certainly good for our overall health. It's good for our physical health and also for our mood. So we want to try to maintain our exercise routines. Uh, if, if you have a, a routine, uh, if you don't have a routine, then uh, maybe it'd be a good time to start one. Uh, you know, many of the gyms have been closed uh, during this time. Some of them, I think, are starting to reopen now. Uh, but if you can't go to the gym, you can certainly use things that you have around your, your home. Uh, that might be a good use for those cans that we were talking about. You can <laughs> use just uh, those as light weights. Uh, and uh, many other items can be used as well. So uh, try to maintain those routines, try to get uh, exercise as part of your daily routine. And it's a good mindset, isn't it? Uh, the scripture talks about uh, keeping my body under control, bring it into subjection. Paul's talking about how he disciplined himself and he's talking about other areas of his life, but this is an area where we do it as well. And it's good to do some of those things outside, isn't it? Right. Exposure to, to fresh air and sunshine has, has been shown to be good for our overall health. It's certainly uh, good for our, our mood as well. It's good for our mental health as well as our physical health. So uh, even though we may not be getting out as much as we're used to in the past, it's good just to, to get outside, especially when the sun's shining and, and expose yourself to some of that fresh air and sunshine. It's good for uh, our vitamin D levels, but it's uh, good just for our overall health as well. And the scripture talks about that a lot. Uh, you're outside and you're thinking about the heavens, what you can see, looking at the clouds and so forth. We talk about that on our little staying healthy poster as well. Helps us just to have a good mindset. And as you mentioned, fresh air is good. And uh, even walking is good, isn't it? Yes, sir. Just getting out and, and moving around, even if you're not uh, in shape to where you want to go running or jogging or that sort of thing, just getting out and and uh, walking around and getting a little uh, fresh air and just uh, some physical activity is good for your health. And our moms, they told us to wash our hands. Um, here's something about the science of soap. Why is that so important uh, with COVID-19 and, and at all times? Right. Uh, I think we're going to talk uh, a little bit later about maybe the face coverings. Um, but you know, one of the most important things that we can do uh, for hygiene is just good hand washing. That's uh, still important uh, now as ever, um, because you know, most uh, of the way that we believe that this virus is being transmitted is through uh, the touching of the droplets. And then, uh, you know, you touch your, your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and those droplets are spread that way. So if we keep our hands clean and keep those uh, droplets washed off our hands and that really minimizes our risk of infection. So um, good old soap and water is, is the best way to do that. Um, you know, if you don't have um, uh, that opportunity, then we're going to talk about hand sanitizer as well. But uh, the soap uh, and binds with the water and helps uh, uh, wash that, uh, uh, those pathogens off of our hands. Uh, we want to be sure that we're doing it correctly. We want to be sure that we're doing it for, uh, a uh, long enough duration. Uh, this slide talks about uh, 40 to 60 seconds. Many of us, most of us, in fact, probably don't wash our hands for nearly uh, that long. Um, but we certainly want to use uh, plenty of soap, plenty of water. Uh, you want to wet your hands and then apply soap to cover your hands. And then you really want to use the, the friction of uh, rubbing your hands together, your palms and your fingers, uh, being sure that you cover your fingers, that you cover your palms, that you get the backs of your hands and rub for um, at least 30 seconds. And then you want to wash that off uh, thoroughly with the good fresh water. And we all find ourselves in some situations where we can't wash our hands. And you kind of alluded to that. The hand sanitizer is helpful at that point. Right. If soap and water are not available, then hand sanitizer is effective. It's uh, been shown to be effective against this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, Again, uh, you want to be sure that you get good coverage, that you want to apply uh, plenty of the hand sanitizer, and again, that you use that friction, that you rub your palms, your fingers, the backs of your hands, so that you cover all the surfaces of your hands uh, to do an adequate job. And then we get into questions like the gloves. Uh, uh, this diagram seems to be pretty complicated, and the, I think we've got several of them from the WHO. Um, about wearing gloves, but there, we do need a set of gloves and there's times where it's really important to wear gloves. 
isn't it? Yes, there are. Gloves can certainly be effective in helping us to avoid the infection or avoid the spread of infection. Uh, I think these slides show that uh, that just wearing a glove is maybe a little more complicated than uh, than it sounds. That uh, when we wear gloves, we want to be sure that we're putting them on properly and that we're taking them off properly so that we don't uh, contaminate our hands uh, when we take the gloves off. So you want to be sure that you're uh, touching clean surfaces to clean surfaces and contaminated surfaces to contaminated surface. Um, and I think that's the point of, of uh, most of these slides here. And they have a lot of, of details about that. We'll send this out on our PowerPoint. Um, so it, it is good just to be, just because you had gloves on doesn't mean you're safe if you don't, if you didn't put them on correctly and if we don't take them off right. And I thought this was an interesting slide. This is kind of the way you have to, deal with things uh, as you're going along and working with people. Right, so this slide is uh, talking more specifically about patient care and about hand hygiene as we try to practice that uh, in caring for patients. Certainly we want our hands to be clean before we touch the patient and then before we, we would do any kind of uh, procedure on a patient, we're gonna be sure that we've uh, practiced that good hand hygiene. And then certainly after we've exposed ourselves to any uh, blood or bodily fluids. We want to practice that good hygiene again uh, after touching any patient and after uh, touching any of the surfaces in, in, in the room uh, with a patient. And, uh, you know, um, that's uh, important uh, that we remember uh, to carry out those steps. And as we were talking about the, the gloves just a, just a second ago, uh, about wearing them properly and removing them properly, I've also seen people uh, wear gloves and then they'll have those same gloves on, they don't take the gloves off and they may go uh, eat something or touch their face or, uh, you know, may go um, touch uh, something that uh, another person is going to be touching. And that's not very effective way to wear gloves. You know, if you're going to wear gloves, you don't want to be exposing them uh, to multiple uh, people or multiple surfaces. Uh, you don't want to expose uh, your own uh, face to, um, to a potentially dirty or contaminating glove. So you just want to keep that in mind when you're wearing gloves that you're wearing them in an effective manner. And some of our folks may be looking, why are they talking so much about this? And one of the things that's happened with COVID-19 is nursing homes have had a lot of outbreaks of it. And uh, so all of us need to think when we're with people, uh, kind of think this way about how things are contaminated, how we can contaminate others so we can protect them and, and protect others. And uh, one of the things you talk a lot about is avoiding touching your face. And uh, here's a study talking about how much people did actually touch their face. And uh, it, it's a little bit frightening. Um, average of three per hour uh, for one to 53 seconds, how often they touch their hair and so forth. Even though um, we even have a little study, don't we, about medical students and how often they were touching their faces too. Right, so this, this study looked uh, particularly at uh, some medical students about how often they've touched their face, uh, how many times an hour, like was demonstrated in the previous slide, and then just making them aware of the fact that they were doing this, uh, helped them uh, comply uh, with less uh, face touching. Uh, and, uh, you know, so just being aware uh, just kind of keep that in your mind uh, may help you be aware. Although if you don't mind me sharing brother Eddie, as we were getting ready for this, <laughs> brother Eddie touched his face as we were about to ready. To I got smacked. <laughs> uh, my, my pastor and I have had this conversation too, as we've been on uh, Facebook uh, trying to do worship services and uh, I have to get on him frequently by touching his nose and touching his eyes when he's on the Facebook presentation. So uh, it is, it's, you know, it's, it's a habit. It's, it's common and, and we all do it. We just need to be aware of it and just being aware of it will help us do it less. And we can do just that, point that out. Oh, you're touching your eyes. Oh, you're touching your hair. And it helps us uh, to, to get away from that in this particular slide they talk about giving people something to hold uh doing and, and even like some of the face coverings which we'll talk about in a little bit sometimes make it more likely that we we touch our face let's talk that's a little true. bit of yes sir Th that's true i was just saying just having uh, something else to occupy your hands like you like you said something to hold uh particularly maybe in some of our elderly uh, people or maybe in some of our, our, our younger folks, um, some of the kids just having something to, 
to hold on to may help keep them from touching their face as much. That's good. So we need to clean these household surfaces with some disinfected or, or bleach daily. Right. So we talked about the good hand hygiene. So we want to talk about good, uh, good cleaning and uh, disinfecting processes around our homes and our churches. Uh, certainly at home, we want to clean uh, household surfaces with a, either a disinfectant spray or disinfectant wipe or some type of, of bleach cleaner, at, at least daily. Uh, we may want to do it more often than that if they're high traffic areas or uh, uh, you have a lot of people in your home or people coming in and out of your home, then uh, you may want to do it even more often than that. But at least a good uh, cleaning of those uh, hard surfaces, those frequently touched surfaces, such as the uh, the doorknobs, the light switches, uh, the countertops, the refrigerator handles, uh, drawer handles, uh, things like that that we have mentioned earlier. And to maintain the social distancing, uh, knowing that people have different levels of concern when it comes to this. Right, and uh, I think we're seeing that as, as we've had conversations about uh, coming out of these quarantine situations and uh, potentially getting back into worship services. Uh, there are are many who are, are anxious to do that and, and don't have um, you know a lot of fear about the coronavirus and then there are many who are more reluctant who, who do have fears and, and very real concerns and uh, you know some of those folks may have uh, pre-existing conditions that put them at a higher risk uh, and we just want to be considerate of that we want to be uh, considerate of those who uh, are more reluctant and uh, have a higher level of concern uh, and, and then we want to be aware uh, that there are folks who, who don't have that level of concern and we need to, uh, you know, try to be respectful of each other's feelings and, uh, and uh, just have courtesy toward one another. And it's really a Philippians chapter two situation where he talks about thinking about the interest of others. Uh, but we do really want to concentrate on that six feet space rule as much as possible, don't we? That's for sure, Brother Eddie, we want to try to maintain that six foot spacing as much as, as possible. You know, um, as we uh, particularly go back in uh, to the worship services, that can um, be difficult to do. We may have to remind people, uh, you have to consider that as you uh, start thinking about uh, setting up your, your seating. Uh, you think about that as you're, as you're going in and out. Um, not only, of course, as we go back to worship, but as we're out and about in the community as well, as we're going to the uh, retail places or other uh, places we may visit that we want to try to stay uh, six feet away from one another and maintain that uh, social distancing, that good spacing. Now, there's been a lot of debate and a lot of talk about masks, um, whether we should wear them, whether we shouldn't, but there's times when we really need to wear masks, um, aren't there? There certainly are times when, when uh, masks can be very important. There are, are communities, even in our area, who've um, mandated uh, the wearing of masks when you're out in public. Um, and I know that's uh, a controversial subject. It's a controversial subject uh, even uh, among the medical community to, to some extent. Uh, we certainly know that uh, initially we felt face coverings were only important uh, if you were ill. Uh, it helped uh, protect others from the spread of, of possible droplets. Uh, but we know now that uh, some people are are asymptomatic uh, for uh, maybe a period of days before they, uh, after they've been infected with the virus, before they uh, start showing symptoms. And uh, there are uh, a limited number of studies that show that there may be even some asymptomatic carriers there. So um, certainly wearing a mask uh, can help us uh, prevent the spread of the virus if, if we were to have it and not have symptoms. And it may uh, in some instances, you know, certainly the better masks, uh, uh, not just the, the regular face coverings or cloth masks, but the, the more medical masks can help us um, protect our own selves uh, against, uh, you know, inhaling the virus uh, particles. Uh, it is sort of a controversial subject. Uh, we've sort of approached that um, uh, outside the medical community uh, as, as uh, you know, trying to be respectful of other people and recognize, again, the different levels of concern. And we certainly want uh, to put uh, people at ease. And if people are more comfortable uh, with the face coverings, then we certainly want to encourage that. And especially when they're in situations uh, like when they can't social distance. So it's good for everybody to, to have a mask and because uh, they could be in a situation where they have to wear them. 
Right. Good. Certainly, if you can, if you cannot maintain that social distancing, then uh, masks are, are are more important, and you don't know when you may uh, get into a situation where. Uh, you know, somebody may not be respectful of that social distancing and maintaining those spaces. Um, so uh, it's a good idea to have access to a mask. Or you may want to keep one uh, with you, keep one in your pocket or keep one in your glove box or just have one on hand so that you can uh, wear that. And you can make your own. I know some churches have made masks and given them away. Uh, this is from the CDC website talking about how you can use shirts and so forth or a bandana to make a mask as well. Yeah, you can just uh, use a simple homemade mask, just a cloth covering uh, will certainly help uh, prevent the spread of some of those droplets and, and can be effective. Now, it's also important to have the right kind of attitude, isn't it? Yes, sir, Brother Eddie. I think, uh, you know, that's one of the most important things we want to try to do uh, during this time is just maintain uh, a cheerful attitude, again, to be uh, compassionate and, and kind and uh, treat um, people the way we want to be treated uh, and certainly uh, to show the love of Jesus uh, during this time and be respectful of other people's feelings. And Proverbs says it's really uh, like medicine when we have a merry heart, in other words, happy and laughing a bit. And it's easy at this time for folks to just focus on uh, what we can't do or what we're missing out on. Uh, but Philippians 4, Paul talked about, think about these kinds of things, things that are honest, just, pure, and lovely, and of a good report. And so we want to th think about the right things and also the right thoughts about ourselves. Uh, if we think about ourselves like the Lord thinks of us, we'll, have a, we'll not have an inappropriately high opinion, but we'll be thinking, okay, I'm in the image of God and I do matter and I'm um, important. It really does impact our health as well, doesn't it? Yes, sir. It certainly does. We want to uh, maintain that uh, positive attitude and that helps us uh, maintain better health overall. So we want to encourage you to, to go to our website, nafwb.org. There are several uh, posters. I think they call them memes where you can, uh, you can download those, you can print those, you could give them to different people. There's also some little posters about wearing masks, uh, keeping uh, social distancing and so forth that you might want to use in your church or in different places uh, to help remind folks about what we're trying to do to protect each other during this particular time. Well, thank you, Dr. Yerby, for stopping in and being with us and doing this webinar for us today. We really appreciate you, my friend. Well, thank you, Brother Eddie. Thank you for all that you're doing. And we want to thank you who have attended today, and we want to encourage you to go online and complete our webinar satisfaction seminar. Tell us uh, how we can improve our seminars. Tell us any seminars you would like to see as well. If you did not register, if you're watching on Facebook Live or if you're uh, uh, watching on YouTube, if you email us at questions at nafwb.org, we'll send you the link to evaluate our seminar and we'll also send you the PowerPoint from the seminar so you can take a closer look at what's offered there. Notice our next seminar is June the 4th, talk about keeping your children on the, the right track or keeping them on track during the COVID-19 disruption. And we'll have a child psychologist, Robin Ezell from North Carolina, Two Paths Crossing will be with us and she'll share with us that day. So we hope you'll come and join us for that and you will share that uh, with your friends. And so it's truly is our prayer for you that you'll prosper, that you'll be in health. We think this is good for us as Christians to be good stewards of what the Lord has given us. And we think you can use the information we've discussed today to help others as they're uh, going through this time to be healthy and be in good shape. Uh, so let's close out in prayer and we'll wish you well. Father, we thank you for Dr. Yerby and the time he spent with us today. Thank you for the opportunity we have to look at your word and how it applies even to these health situations. Help us to stay healthy and help us to help others and use, uh, use us during this time. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Yerby. Thanks, Brother Eddie.